Holden Holden Caulfield. Holden Caulfield. Holden Caulfield. What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Now since this is the first video I'll be posting, I decided I wanted to do something personal to let people get to know me a little bit better. So I decided to do a video on my top 10 favorite bands of all time. Now I'm not gonna lie, the uh, top three were fairly easy to figure out, but from there on was hard to narrow down. It got down to me knocking out a lot of bands and artists that had a really significant impact on my life or were just overall a fantastic band. And honestly, I felt bad about knocking some of them out, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and kick off the list. Build my life on this, huh. half my adult life unlearning, lies that I heard in a dumb sermon. Coming in at number 10, I have Andy Minio. I found Andy whenever he dropped his Heroes for Sale album. That was around the time that I started getting into other rappers on that label, like Lecrae and KB, Tripoli. And I remember the first song that I had heard from that album was The Saints that had KB and Tripoli in it. From the moment I heard that song, I knew I had to find out more about that dude. And from then on, I fell in love with his music. The way he's able to handle serious subject matter like corruption and complacency in Christianity with tracks like Uncomfortable, or just overall darkness and negativity in the world, like in the track Death Has Died from Heroes for Sale, or even the way he's able to dive into his own personal issues, like I'm able to relate to the tracks like Family Photo and Bitter. Just overall, he's able to write lyrics in a way where it's challenging as well as not overstepping a boundary, but able to make his point. Coming in at number nine, I have Panic at the Disco. So growing up, me and my brother used to play video games all the time together, especially Guitar Hero and Rock Band. And one of the tracks that stood out to me was Nine in the Afternoon off of Rock Band 2. With that song by itself, it was already a different sound than I was used to hearing. That led me into finding probably their most popular song I write since, not tragedies which I instantly fell in love with. But one of the things I love most about the band is they were one of the very few bands that were able to transition from a more pop punk, emo sound into just straight pop music. But they were able to pull it off. And not a lot of bands have been able to do that. Me personally, I believe that they've gotten better with every album that they've released, let alone Brendan Urie being able to sing the way he can Although most of the original band members aren't a part of the band anymore, you still have Brendan Yuri who can sing like nobody's business. Also a side note, whenever Panic at the Disco was on tour with Weezer a couple years back, during Death of a Bachelor, I had proposed to my wife and she had said yes. And you'll actually be seeing her in a couple videos coming up really, really soon, so be sure to check those out. But just the ability for the band to hit different genres of music and still be able to make hit after hit after hit, get better and better with every album, is what's kept me in love with the band. Some of my personal favorites being Casual Affair, L.A. Devotee, or one of their older songs, The Ballad of Mona Lisa. So coming in at number eight, I have the man who inspired me to pick up a guitar and learn how to play. I have John Mayer. I may have some people disagree with me in the comments whenever I say this, but for me personally, that is my favorite guitarist. I think that he is the best guitar player that we have on this earth right now. The way he's able to merge blues rock and pop rock together and it sounds flawlessly. Not cheesy, not like he's just trying to make another radio hit single that's popular for a couple weeks but he's able to fuse both of those genres together flawlessly at the same time as being able to speak with his guitar 
if you've never heard him play live or in the studio, he's literally able to make you feel whatever the emotion of the song is while he's playing it. And it'll just be a guitar solo that he's playing. There will be no lyrics or singing, anything like that. I discovered John Mayer whenever Continuum would come out, which is my personal favorite album by him. Although most of his other albums, like Battle Studies, most recently The Search for Everything, uh, and Heavier Things, have kept up the par with the quality that Continuum brings. And the variety that he has with his guitar playing from being able to absolutely kill it with a cover of Boldest Love from Jimi Hendrix to being able to have emotional softer ballads like You're Gonna Live Forever in Me or Stop This Train to being able to go into a full blues thing with the John Mayer Trio. Honestly, I believe this is one of the most talented individuals in music we've had in decades. You ain't never been on my level, I got a problem with the way they keep on talking and acting like everybody gonna get it, but I sleep with your eyes off. So coming in at number seven, I have NF. Now I'm not gonna lie, I started getting very worried whenever he started getting some mainstream success. Because I had started listening to NF whenever he had released Mansion. Before all the mainstream success, he was relatively popular in the Christian rap community. And I was worried once he started getting mainstream success that he was gonna start putting out stuff that would just be popular for a little while and then be done and he would lose the quality that he has in his lyrics. But boy did he prove me wrong. Every album that he's released has gotten better and he's been able to write about his mental health and depression in a way to where album to album you can see his journey to freedom through his music. He's able to show off his skill lyrically at the same time as punching you in the face with his instrumentation, with songs like Real, Intro 1, 2, and 3, Paid My Dues, Leave Me Alone, and then he's able to flip that and get more personal and emotional with songs like How Could You Leave Us, Let You Down, and Only. Even from the first time I heard him, I saw the potential that NF was carrying, and from album release to album release, he's gone beyond what I had expected he would do, and I don't see him going away anytime soon. All right, I am not gonna lie, this one hurt me a little bit that this band didn't make it into my top five. Lord, did you see me as I was dreaming? So at number six, I have Silent Planet. I had found out about these guys whenever I went to For Today's Wake album release tour. Usually whenever I go to a concert and one of the bands on the lineup I hadn't heard of, I'll check out some of their music to see if I'll even enjoy going to see them or not, or if that's gonna be the part where I walk around, shop at merch tables. So I had typed in Silent Planet to YouTube, and the first video that popped up was the music video for Native Blood. Whenever I first listened to the song, I really liked it, but I had thought that this was just gonna be another one of those bands that I had seen live and forgot about. And then I saw them live. The way that they're able to make you feel the emotion and the depth of each song that they write in the studio has nothing on the way that it can make you feel when you see these guys live. They put so much passion and emotion into their live show that I've seen them four or five times now and I have never left one of their shows without bawling my eyes out. Now don't get me wrong, they definitely have rowdy mosh pit capability, but it's just they make you feel the songs. It's not just you love their songs or you listen to their songs, it's you feel their songs. A reoccurring topic with a lot of the bands on this list is the way that they're able to handle serious issues or mental health issues, and Silent Planet is able to handle it perfectly. With songs like Panic Room that are able to talk about veterans coming back and suffering from PTSD, or with Injustice and Corruption in the World with songs like No Place to Breathe, or even going on a much deeper personal level with the song Trilogy that's written from the experiences of air vocalist Garrett while being inside of a mental institution. But like I said before, these guys can make you feel their songs on a much deeper personal level than most bands I've ever heard of before. Not to mention the absolute masterpiece of an album that The Night God Slept is. Some personal favorites I have from that one is Wasteland's XX City Grave and my personal favorite song by them in general, The Depths 2. Now I want everyone watching this to do me a favor and go off somewhere by yourself, listen to The Depths 2, and tell me that it doesn't make you feel some kind of way.
So kicking off my top five, I have Paramore. Now this is another one of those bands that, much like Panic! and the Disco, they went from a pop punk style to a straight 80s rock sound with their latest release, After Laughter. I found out about Paramore, I believe through MTV, seeing their music video for Pressure. And I knew immediately from that moment that this was going to be one of my favorite bands. Even with their songs that are considered the basic radio-friendly songs like Misery Business, Hard Times, and Ain't It Fun. They're still amazing tracks that don't feel overplayed. They never lose that spark of the first time you've heard the song. And then the absolutely killer tracks that I consider very underrated and deserve a whole lot more praise than what they get with This Heart, Let the Flames Begin, and Emergency. Not only is their studio stuff amazing, but their live performance takes it up to 11. Every time I've seen Paramore live, they've been able to go above and beyond the expectation from the studio songs. And at number four, we have Linkin Park. I remember going to see the Transformers movie in theaters and hearing the song What I've Done during the credits as we were walking out and turning back around to wait till the very end of it so I could figure out who this band was. I remember thinking these guys were a pretty good rock band and I wanted to look up more of their stuff. And boy was I in for a surprise because almost none of their songs sounded like what I've done after I had listened to it. I was introduced into Mike Shinoda's rapping with the song Bleed It Out, and I was also introduced into Chester's vocal capabilities with Given Up. When me and my brother were younger, we had talked my dad into buying the album Meteora. And I remember us hiding it in our room, playing it through our DVD player over the TV speakers, and any time that a scream would come up, we would pause it, poke our head out the door, make sure that dad wasn't coming to tell us to turn it off. Not very long after listening to Meteora, I had picked up Hybrid Theory, which is by far their best album. The way that they're able to mix in Chester screaming and Mike rapping with super heavy mosh pit sounding songs like A Place For My Head, One Step Closer, or Given Up, or the way that those songs are able to flow incredibly well with softer or poppier stuff like from the album Living Things or One More Life. With every album release, they've been able to tweak their sounds a little bit here and a little bit there and pull it off. But like I had said before, with John Mayer being the person who influenced me to pick up a guitar and learn how to play, Linkin Park was the band that made me want to be in a band and write music. And when the reports that came out that Chester had committed suicide, that was the first time that I had heard about any form of a celebrity death that had any kind of impact on me. I couldn't even think about listening to these guys for weeks after I found that out because I would get too emotional. Going back through now, listening to all of Linkin Park's music from beginning to end, album by album, it's almost like you're reading into Chester's diary that the warning signs have been there all along and realizing what a lot of their songs were about. I'm admitting now that I have a problem! At number three, we've got Beartooth. Beartooth is one of the most open and honest bands about dealing with mental health that I've ever heard. Their album, Disgusting, in my opinion, is their most open about these things lyrically. You can see with this album all the battles that Caleb Shomo is going through with his own personal demons, with songs like The Lines, Me in My Own Head, and especially the final track, Sick and Disgusting, that was literally written while Caleb was going through a panic attack. But at the same time, you see the desire that he has to give other people hope with songs like Beaten in Lips and Body Bag. And then we have Disease, that's their best album instrumentally. They experimented so much with this album. They were able to pull off a mix of classic Beartooth sound with songs like You Never Know and Bad Listener, mix in a little bit of pop punk with the song Believe, and then able to mix super heavy breakdowns with a Slayer sounding guitar riff with the song Enemy. All of this while at the same time being able to still keep the same lyrical content that they had had in all of their other previous albums. And I like to think of their second album, Aggressive, as a perfect midway point to where they have fantastic instrumentation and fantastic lyrics all combined into one. Some of my own favorite tracks from this album are Loser, Rock Is Dead, Burnout, but I can say this with full confidence that every album and every song that Beartooth has released has never had a dud, and I don't think they're going to be making one anytime soon. Friends, to this day I'm asking 
So coming in at number two, we have the band that would have been number one if you'd have asked me this two years ago, we have Green Day. I found out about Green Day whenever I had went to a store with some family and convinced them to buy me the album American Idiot because I like the way the album cover looked. Now don't get me wrong, I had known some Green Day songs before that, but I didn't realize they were Green Day. I remember coming home and putting that album in my CD player and literally had it on repeat for the rest of the day. From the moment that album finished, I knew that they were going to be my favorite band. And up until about 2018, they were. And although American Idiot and Dookie and 21st Century Breakdown, Nimrod, all of those albums are classic, usually pretty high up on people's lists. My personal favorite Green Day album is Kerplunk. My favorite tracks from that are 2000 Light Years Away, Christy Road, who wrote Holden Caulfield. But much like a lot of the other bands on this list, Green Day has not made a bad album, well, except for Dose. But contrary to popular opinion, I think that their newest album, Father of All, is actually a pretty great album. And I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me with that, but that's okay. The way that they're able to pull off classic punk style, like with Welcome to Paradise, Platypus I Hate You, and American Idiot, and then still be able to experiment with their sound, like with Kill the DJ from Uno, or Stab You in the Heart from Father of All, or even Brutal Love from Trey. The guys in Green Day, aside from one of them, have never disappointed me with their music. Before we get to my number one, I wanted to just thank you guys again for checking out the video. It means a lot. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but never had the guts to do it. So hopefully this isn't too bad of a video. Coming in at number one, I have Fit for a King. Much like Silent Planet was, I didn't know about these guys until I had went to that same Four Today show. Whenever I was looking up songs to check these guys out, their song Slave to Nothing that had Maddie Montgomery from For Today in it was the first song that I had listened to and was kind of the same way I was with Silent Planet where I was like, okay, these guys should be pretty good. And once again, then I saw them live. These guys really do not mess around whenever they put on a live show. Every show that I've seen Fit for a King at have not been headliners. I've seen them tour with Beartooth, I've seen them tour with Ice Nine Kills, and where I discovered them, I've seen them with For Today as the headliner. And the crowd control that they have while they're performing put the rest of those bands to shame. Not to mention the way that in most aspects of their music, I feel like they are so much better live. Their most recent album, Dark Skies, starts off with the perfect opening song with Engraved. You have Backbreaker that shows off Ryan Kirby's vocal abilities with an infinite scream at the end. And then they end it off with the song Oblivion that, while at the same time feels like a perfect ending to an album, it still is just as energetic as any other song on that album. Not to mention you have the classics like Hollow King and Warpath from their album Creation Destruction, Hooked from their album Slave to Nothing, and even some incredibly solid tracks from their first album Descendants, like Keep Me Alive, Ancient Waters, and Hollow Eyes. But then there's also not only my personal favorite Fit for a King album, but my personal favorite album of all time, Death Grip. They're able to talk about violence and evil and corruption in the world with songs like Pissed Off and their title track Death Grip, to being able to talk about parental abandonment in the song Dead Memory, and even able to hit on self-image issues and feelings of worthlessness in the song More Than Nameless. This album overall is able to talk about anything and everything and handle it perfectly, and you're still able to go to a show to any of these songs and go crazy in a mosh pit. Alright guys, so that was my list of my top 10 favorite bands of all time. I hope that you got to know me a little bit better. Put down in the comments what some of your favorite bands are. I'd love to see what your guys' opinions are. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.